Hello and welcome to this episode of Digital Transformation Dialogues, presented by Dassault Systems in association with The Economic Times. The automotive industry has always been dynamic, exciting, and a challenging one too. It's more so now with disruptions and innovation on the rise, with technology playing a role more crucial than ever before. Endurance Technologies, India's largest two- and three-wheeler component manufacturer, is among those companies which are making strong efforts to build their in-house technological capabilities. We are here in Endurance Technologies' home city, Aurangabad, to have a discussion with the company's CTO and an industry veteran, Ravindra Kharul, to understand more about strategies to be in tune with the changing times, emerging technology trends in the two- and three-wheeler segments, growing role of digital technologies, and much more. Hi, Hi Samantha. Warm welcome to Endurance Technology Limited and Aurangabad. Thank you. Always good to be here and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. I think let's go to the growing ground. Yeah, look forward to it. Come let's go. Ravi, you know, the first thing comes to my mind as I enter this facility is uh, why a proving ground? I mean, it's good to have a proving ground. There are pro proving grounds of OEMs, but uh, a proving ground by a component manufacturer is not common. Perhaps this is the one, one of its kind in, in, in the Indian component industry. What is the idea behind this? How did it all start? Yeah. See, uh, as far as endurance is concerned, we have majorly proprietary components. By proprietary means that we own our designs. And the component what uh, we are making, like suspension, brakes, clutches, or CVT, we, if we want to understand how the power product performs, we have to test it on vehicle. Suspension can be felt only on the vehicle. Brakes, whether it is working or effective or not, you have to see it on the vehicle. But for that, you have got testing agencies. Absolutely. India's testing infrastructure is also improving. Exactly. Why invest so much time and effort? I True. believe you've invested, what, around 55 watt crores here? Right. So we have spent around 55 crores because uh, it gives us some uh, strategic and clear advantages. A designer also has to understand how whatever he designs, how does it feel on the vehicle. Now, every now and then, we cannot have access to OEM's proving ground. So, in order to have a good understanding of our own products, our design engineers to be a better designers, we thought that we should have our own proving ground. So, then we can do n number of time styles, testing and do. Not only that, uh, actually, then we can do the tuning of the parts on the vehicles and that can be done on the track with very short time. You can reduce the product tuning time from months to days. And that is a clear advantage. So as a result, it gives us a good advantage over a competition also, that such unique facility is available here. That's interesting. No, it's, it's a very uh, interesting move uh, on endurance technologies part. But tell me, I mean, this, op uh, this proving ground has been in operation what, for about three, three years? Three years now, almost three years. Okay. It is. So what are the advantages or benefits that you have experienced? Uh, yeah. So as I said that, uh, Apart from the intangible benefit, direct tangible benefit is product performance. One good example is our ABS. Now, ABS, complete evaluation of ABS, the tuning of the ABS happened on our proving ground. It gives us freedom to use it anytime, whatever. when you require it is available, right? Right, right? And then you can evaluate, it's really fast. And today, time is the essence for all new product development. This is helping us like anything. Ravi, uh, what are the core technology pillars for endurance technologies to keep itself in tune with the times, or should I say, in these very challenging, disruptive times? First thing is innovation. Innovation is one of our core values at endurance. Cross-functional teamwork and uh, affordable excellence. Most importantly, customer voice. We use technology to meet the customer requirements, as well as to solve customer problems. And in turn, we 
improve our product performance, reliability, durability, quality and also it helps us in giving better and new technology features through our products to the customers. And uh, how are you leveraging technology throughout the RFQ to the product development process in order to enhance the value proposition, enhance the cost efficiency and also being, be more agile with the end goal of you know, getting more contracts, gaining more customers. At Endurance, we aim to use uh, excellent blend of uh, technology from our technology partners of the product technology. At the same time, we are making good use of our uh, in-house developed technology. At Endurance, we have got uh, four DSR approved uh, R&D centers for each product line. And uh, each of these product R&D centers are well equipped and with the state of the art facilities and that helps us in uh, meeting the customer requirements better. At uh, Endurance we are also using good uh, or leveraging the uh, digital platforms to meet these uh, requirements. At the same time we are having a continuous focus on lean product development and uh, lean manufacturing. So that's how it's helping us. What are the technology trends you are witnessing in the two and three wheeler segments currently and what are the ones that you expect to come in, in the market in the near future? And talking about trends, you know, how do you think a technology can help uh, uh, reduce risks as well as, uh, as, well as help uh, adapt to these uh, new trends much earlier in the product life cycle, maybe at the development stage itself? So when we look at like uh, the technology trends that are upcoming in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment especially, uh, first thing is light weighting. Uh, light weighting, as we say that, okay, generally light weighting when we talk about across automotive field it is applicable, but especially in Indian context, it is not just light weighting, it is cost-effective light weighting. Yeah, so cost-effective and especially for the two-wheelers it is more uh, uh, sensitive, sensitive issue as such. And apart from that, like active safety, connected vehicles especially from the three wheelers point of view or two wheeler logistics vehicles and all that point of view it is important then the electrification the EV train we are already seeing you can say about recently launched our products especially for example anti-lock braking system ABS which is already in the market for two wheelers and good that it is well received in the market also apart from that we also started aluminum forging which actually will be also useful for light weighting going forward but uh, right now it is more of a backward integration and also wire bedded hoses which are mainly used for anti-lock braking systems again as a backward integration so these are few things which we are just to cope up with the same trends and technology and ensuring affordability is what we are looking at as a thing so here uh, the technology especially the digital platforms help us a long way especially reducing the uh, time for development and many issues we can address upfront at the design stage itself that helps us in doing a lot of iterations at the design stage rather than making the prototypes and testing on the vehicles. Right, right. So that is how it helps. Ravi, uh, better performance, durability, low cost are key factors to bag new contracts. According to you, what are the ways technology can help in scoring high on all these parameters throughout the product life cycle? Uh, I think I'll uh, take you to our uh, endurance tagline which is complete solutions. Okay. So wherein we try to go beyond our product, not only that we assure the product quality performance, durability, all that, but how it is going to perform on the vehicle is more important and crucial. So that is where the complete solution plays the role that we offer that solution to the customers, which is going to fulfill their needs and all. And with that thing in mind, right from say RFQ stage to design, development, or product validation, product tuning, or mass production, all at different stages, we use complete different technologies, digital technologies across to ensure that yes, we can provide those desired outputs at much uh, shorter time and also much more accurately. Then when it comes to design, of course, it's all uh, uh, digital designs, of course, 3D model, modeling softwares. So that we do. We, after that, actually, what we look at is ensuring all the CA is done upfront at the design stage itself. A detailed CA optimization is done. So you can do a lot of design iteration in a short span of time. Rather than getting into the product made in the later and then 
coming back so that helps us and while doing so we also ensure that we have a detailed virtual validation plan so that we don't skip or anything any of those things so what has learned over a period ensure that the no repeat failures can come in so that, so that will the, enhance the durability part absolutely the durability as well as that also enhances the performance in a way that we are then sure that how it is going to give the performance but so technology comes at a cost and yeah. here the challenge is to keep curtail the cost as much as possible if not reduce it so how do you right so from that point of view most important is how do we effectively use these tools and one thing that has helped us in ensuring that we are using it effectively is that uh, we have an advanced engineering group which takes care of all the CAE as well as detailed failure analysis and all that apart from that we have physical validation in labs on proving ground so at every stage when you do that the gap between virtual versus the physical validation comes down and that becomes the key and that helps us in marching towards like what we call it as uh, first time right you would have heard that right. as a everywhere uh, buzzword but what i will say is that more than first time right it is actually always first time right so at every product every stage we should be able to every time we should be able to give that and this is the way is uh, this way is helping us to march towards that aftr i will say rather than ftr always first time right which is what is the requirement for this so how much of a role has this proving ground uh, played so far uh, uh, since it has been built in getting that aftr always first time right yeah or is it too early still no it's not too early uh, already now our proving ground is in use for last 3 uh, years or so and within 3 years one major output of this track i will say is uh, for proper tuning of anti lock braking system which is very crucial and normally it takes uh, quite long time and lot of efforts to do that uh, tuning so that has been done on this track and it has really helped us to do not only that uh, we have also developed our uh, electronic adjustable suspension the tuning of that was done on this track so it has already started building you know and uh, talking about digitalization uh, could you give us an idea about what's the level of uh, digitalization uh, at uh, endurance technologies currently and also talking about uh, the role of partners technology suppliers they play a very key role in today than perhaps ever before so what what is the change what how is the role of a uh, technology supplier also evolving uh, over the years especially in the product life cycle management space yeah so as i mentioned that at every stage of our product life cycle we are using lot of digital uh, platforms for doing various activities whether it is design or analysis or testing validation at every stage when you do you require lot of technical support for that particular function to perform better and more accurate and repeatable but more important is that how do then we put that together how do we look at and integrate all that together to ensure that the product comes out better and that is where uh, we are using a sort of product life cycle management software which actually go, uh, takes up all the inputs and then integrates together it helps us to get a sort of good birds eye view at the same time possibility to deep dive and then see what's happening at a particular point so important role for this is that how do we integrate and fortunately for us uh, we have uh, got a very good technology partner also for that domain we are using uh, innovia which is a plm software so added by doso systems and doso systems along with uh, brainwave consulting are helping us to make good effective use of all these and how to effectively integrate it and there what we have seen is that reducing lot of customization which was earlier done to ensure the product uh, suitability to our platform but uh, with both these partners helped us to minimize the customization such that the performance of the systems raised by several notches and today we are much more now comfortable in using that the latency has reduced at the same time when you see every technology platform keeps upgrading every year or something earlier what used to happen is that when other platform increases the third one doesn't increase or they don't matter it becomes difficult but with reduced this customization and all we are now ready for moving to the next platforms very short time earlier we used to take almost 2 to 3 years to go to the next version now within 6 months we can go to the next version so that all so key is that who is integrating and how are you integrating so plm plays a big role in that that's it lastly uh, ravi we are in an era of megatrends 
Now tell us, uh, in terms of the influence of megatrends uh, in the technology adoption in segments where uh, endurance technologies operate in, uh, what level of influence uh, have, are you witnessing? And also in this, in this current era, uh, how are you collaborating globally and also adapting your product development process according to the market needs? Yeah, so when we talk about uh, mega trends, especially, so for two wheelers, three wheelers, major thing is transition to EV. And uh, when we talk about EV transition, all our product, product lines have some or the other impact of uh, EV on us. So when we talk about suspension or brakes, not that suspension and brakes are not required, they are certainly required, but uh, requirement is slightly different now, which is like, since there is no engine noise, so naturally brakes and suspension need to be more quieter. They have to behave more silently. More silently, <laughs> no abnormal noise, nothing, you can have the squeeze noise, hydraulic noise, what we call, all that should be subdued. And for that, what we need is a really good excellence in uh, NVH, noise vibration and harshness capabilities. And we at Endurance have uh, well equipped ourselves for the complete noise vibration optimization and analysis we have the required uh, equipments as well as the skilled people to do that activity. When we talk about aluminum castings, uh, aluminum castings are uh, what required for EV versus what was required for in, uh, internal combustion engines is altogether different again. Okay. The complexity has come down but at the same time the soundness of castings and others required to be much more uh, important. And uh, apart from that EV is also bringing the light weighting along with that. So when we talk about light weighting, naturally light weighting trend comes as a requirement, more and more requirement of structural castings. So structural aluminum die casting, when you look at, it requires lot of analysis up front. So structural analysis, CA analysis, lot of model behavior analysis, optimization, structural optimization. All that is what is the digital technology that can help us. And uh, therefore digital technology has become all the more crucial. More crucial and interestingly, Endurance is a much better position in for that, mainly because all our other product lines like suspension, brakes, transmission are proprietary in nature. So we own our design. So as a result, we have developed our own technology. So we have got a well uh, skilled departments of advanced engineering with CAE analysis and things. So that is helping us to give much better support to our OEMs for optimizing this aluminum die casting from structural castings point of view. And uh, that we are leveraging not only here, but also with our uh, overseas uh, division, wherein also we are providing the engineering support to them. At the same time, uh, as regards the aluminum die casting, the high technology, high end technology is also there with the overseas team. So that's how we collaborate both sides, like uh, they provide us a lot of uh, die casting technology related inputs. We provide a lot of engineering supports for detailed engineering analysis, optimization and all. That's how we are trying to leverage and that kind of thing is one of the say unique advantage for us over the competition. So that is how we are leveraging and trying to make up with the requirements of that. So what is going to happen is all these new trends are going to require a lot of uh, model based system engineering or uh, what do you say, multi-body dynamics analysis, co-simulations, multi-disciplinary co-simulations is going to be the trend and that is where we have to be well, be well equipped in terms of digital domain as such. Indeed, the journey has been very interesting, I think, Absolutely. for endurance technologies and sure. best wishes for the journey ahead. Thank On that note, so Ravi, thank you very much for this interesting conversation. Wishing you and it's everyone at really. Endurance Technologies all the very best. And thank you viewers very much for tuning into this episode of Digital Transformation Dialogues presented by Dosol Systems in association with The Economic Times. Till we meet again, take care and goodbye.